hi to you again. Um, so I, w I wanted to start with talking a little bit about myself that will give you a context to what we at Clinic I are doing. I was born in a small country in Central Asia called Kyrgyzstan and grew up in a remote village raised by my grandparents. So I loved the life in the village, but when I was seven, I had to move back to the capital city and live with my parents who were working full time. And the reason was my grandmother. So she fell sick and she could no longer get up from her bed. And that's why she could no longer take care of me. I was sent back. But in a matter of several weeks, she passed away. It was super unexpected, shocking, of course. And uh, what was surprising is the speed, right? It just, everything happened so fast. We had no time to inquire, try to fix things. It, it just happened, no chance. And over the years, the question that stuck with me was, let's say if something is wrong with my health or with the health of my loved ones, and it's silent with no symptoms, how do I know? How do we know when to seek help? And that brings me to what we at Clinica have been working for the past couple of years. Our goal is to bring diagnostics closer to homes. And what we're doing is building an at-home diagnostic system by building sensors that can go into regular parts of the house. And what they do is scan your body, track your biofluids, and use that information to diagnose a disorder. As a first goal, we're targeting colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is one of the most common types of cancer in the world. We still have 1.4 million of new cases each year. And the screening market only in the US is $4 billion. The problem with colorectal cancer is that people go and see a doctor only when they have certain symptoms, such as blood and stool, abdominal pain, and that happens towards later stages, which is unfortunate. If you look at the graph, the survival rate increases with every early stage diagnosed. So let's say, for example, if it's stage one with early diagnosis, we can save almost everyone. 94% of everyone has a chance of survival versus stage four. At that, in that case, only one out of 10 people can survive. So if it's so quiet and symptomless at the beginning, how do we detect colorectal cancer at early stages? What we at Clinica have been brainstorming is around the diagnostics itself. And we realize that there's one way of detecting it early, and it's through our homes, of course. Especially there's a place in our homes where we generate a lot of data and just discard it that can be used to track for colorectal cancer. And that place is in our toilets. <laughs> so what can we use our toilets for? For many things, as it turned out, and we can detect colorectal cancer through a device that we at Clinica have developed. This is how it looks like. It goes on top of a toilet. It's a very small snap-on device. And it has an extension fiber that goes under the seat cover. That extension fiber uh, is connected to an optical sensor that scans the surface of the stool in real time. And what we measure, actually, is very interesting. What, uh, let's assume, all of you, uh, you really don't know what's going on in your gut. Is there inflammation? Are you absorbing your nutrients? What are vitamins and so on? But our microbiome is a, like a biosensor. It responds to everything that is happening in our lives, diet, travel, stress. And if our microbiome changes in response to cancer, the output is produced differently. And our optical sensor can pick up the difference. And that applies not only to colorectal cancer. Everything that happens in your life affects your gut. Even, even your relationships, uh, if you have a pet, and right now, there is really no way of quantifying or qualifying that. It's, it's just an unknown space. The core principle of our device is hyperspectral imaging. It's an optical sensor, and as I said, it scans the stool surface. There's a lot of data that we get because it's just a continuous scanning, and we have to use machine learning. But the good part of machine learning is also that we found patterns that we've never thought there were. So it's just new things. When you think of age, gender, people, where they live, there are just certain things that can point you to the direction of the high-risk population that before was unknown. We started with preclinical studies first, of course. We studied mice, and our goal here was to see, can our sensor identify between colorectal cancer and other types of cancer and other types of digestive disorders? And we found that colorectal cancer has a very nice optical signature that we could use to pick it up from other disorders. 
excited by that, we went into humans. So we ran a human study, and what happened here was, fine, uh, there are a lot of methods that diagnose at stage three and four, but could we actually tell if it was stage uh, two, one, or even zero? And that's when we tested polyps and stage zero. So basically, this is the part where cancer is just being born. It doesn't even know that it's becoming cancer. And our sensor can pick up that stage. And because we're in people's homes, we can't be there when that stage happens. To appreciate this fact, it's worth mentioning our competitors. Although colonoscopy, I wouldn't really call it a competitor. Uh, I've witnessed a lot of colonoscopies in my life. <laughs> and I mean, it's true. I've never met a person who would say, oh, I love colonoscopy. <laughs> Just let me have one. So I would, uh, it's a golden standard. And depending on the doctor, the accuracy can be anywhere between Really, I heard 30%. I'm not sure there has not been a study done on that, but it ranges from, let's say, 70 to 90%. There are stool kits that are sent to your home. You collect your precious stool sample, send it back to the lab, and wait for results. So I have a stool kit at home. I had it for a year and a half. It's just hard. I don't want to hold my stool samples. I don't want to have anything to do with it. So it's, it's just that uh, messiness. It's a very private area and there's a very big friction when it comes to getting tested. So that's why we still have late diagnosis of colorectal cancer. To further help our users, we've developed a mobile application. So here I would also like to mention that colorectal cancer for us will be on the background because no one really wakes up in the morning thinking, oh my God, do I have colorectal cancer? But we do wake up thinking, oh, how am I feeling? Am I energetic enough? Am I productive enough? Do I feel smart? So for that, we are tracking other things, such as nutrition, microbiome, and scanning and tracking for colorectal cancer on the background. And this is just another example where we would also get some inputs from the user and then report something fun, right? Like, for example, how much stool you've produced today and gave back to Earth. <laughs> And as I've mentioned, uh, we, we will expand. So colorectal cancer is on the background. At the same time, we will be tracking for infections. We will be tracking for other types of cancer. And nutrition is our goal. We have not done a study on nutrition, but what we found is that diet is the only thing that can fix a lot of things in your gut. So we will be tracking that as well. We filed several patents. Uh, we filed one patent filing several patents uh, on other applications and user recognition. Our, we're right now, we're working on the hospital unit to get it to the hospitals, and we're also uh, polishing our business model. So there will be an upfront hardware fee and a monthly subscription fee for the data analysis. This is our team. I'm a bioinformatician. My co-founder, Chun Hao, is a cancer geneticist. Yaru is our CTO. She's in the room. Juan Carlos is our uh, product person, and we have Mr. Toilet. Worth mentioning him because his nickname is Mr. Toilet. He's known in the world as such, and he will help us expand through toilet companies. And Dr. Condra used to be an Intel CTO, so he's on the security side. Um, these are other things that we want to track, and I'd like to just end with the future of healthcare. It's going to be hyper-personalized, and it's going to start from your homes. And we want to lead that space. And with that, I'd like to thank you, and be healthy. And if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, maybe joke, but uh, the, the question, you want to have an optical sensor down there, right? It's not a camera, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> so it's not a camera. Do not call it optical sensor. It is call it something else, right? Yeah. We so used to call it a camera because we had an actual camera. That's even worse, before, right? <laughs> and one guy told me, why would I want to have something pointing up my buns? So that's when we stopped using cameras yeah. and switched to hyperspectral imaging. Very good point. Though. The second is... Uh, <laughs> We have multiple members in the family. How does it know this is mine and that's... <laughs> of course, you wanna know, right? <laughs> so uh, the, uh, so I'll, uh, I'll answer with two things. So the first one, for identifying who is using the restroom, we will use phone pairing. So at the beginning to avoid, let's say you have a guest too, right? That means then we need to be in the habit of bringing our phone to... <laughs> Don't we already? <laughs> So we've done, <laughs> we've done a research study, and as it turned out, a lot of people bring their phones to the restroom with them. So it's, it's a solved problem. Go 
So I think the schedule you mentioned is a 2021. You plan to get the FDA. So uh, can you elaborate the details of uh, how many patients, something like that? You of do? course. Thank you very much for asking that. I ran out of time, so didn't mention it. We don't need FDA clearance or approval at the beginning because colorectal cancer is not what we are going with to the market. We are going as a gut health monitor that monitors nutrition, microbiome, and so on. Once we get enough users, enough data, enough funds, then we will consider FDA, and even then we might go through the European one instead of the American one. So that's th and that's why we're also working on the design right now. It's in Europe, in manufacturing. Yes? Yeah, what do you think the cost of this will be? Of course. Um, so there are two ways that people can purchase our device. They can pay a higher upfront fee for the hardware, which will be between three and $500, or pay a, bit, a slightly higher monthly subscription fee. But the margins of the hardware will be much lower. Yes. In the toilet, yes. <laughs> yes. Not, the, not the retail toilet seat. Oh, thank you for asking that too. Just to clarify, we're not a toilet company, <laughs> so we won't be <laughs> selling toilets for now. In the future, if somebody, let's say Toto, they've been, they approached us already multiple times. If they give a really nice idea of a super fancy toilet that can be affordable, we might think of integrating because that saves battery space. But until then, we d we're just a consumer slash medical device company. Yes? What's your revenue? <laughs> we are a medical device company that incorporated pretty recently. When it comes to talking about revenue, it will take several years. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> it will be very high, I tell you that. Uh, which stage of the uh, cancer can be detected? So uh, as I showed earlier, we can go from stage zero and up. So we're not... Not only. That's one of the factors, but really our sensors picks up a lot of... Zero, one, two, you have to microscope. Look at the... <laughs> well, that microscope will be in your toilet. So you can think of it that way. <laughs> Any more questions? Think. Oh. Very good question. So the device itself is outside of the toilet. There is an extension fiber that goes under the seat cover that is disposable. And we will also charge for the disposable fiber. It's pretty cheap, but people can order a couple, let's say if they want to travel and take something with them, right? It's, it's a disposable fiber, which is pretty cheap. We will know when it's dirty, though. Uh, yes? Since you have disposable products, is there any way that we can, like, you can reduce like, your environmental impact of that? It will be sent back to us. Yes, we'll definitely, yeah, 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 of course. Because that the issue is not really that it's malfunctioning, the issue is that it's uh, nasty and people don't want to deal with it. <laughs> well, we're okay with it. So you can clean it? Yes, of course. I mean, that's the comp. We don't want to create more waste than there is already is, and that's why our device lifetime is very long, not like an Apple product where you, have, you can upgrade every year. We'll keep it uh, from five to 10 years. Yes. Of course. Um, <laughs> well, hopefully you'll be very confident that you don't need the device anymore, but it takes one scan. Because we're matching a signature of the present to signatures of our database. And we ran studies, we have a lot of samples that we've scanned. So we can already know if it's very, very healthy or could possibly be in the area. And then we will take more scans just to confirm. And then over what period of time? It really... Oh, the scan is continuous. It's all the time. And then it would depend on the person and the stage. If it's a tricky stage, for example, we've noticed that sometimes stage one and stage two overlap. If that's the case, it will take maybe a month to really say which one it is. But in other cases, when it's a clear, let's say stage four, then yeah, it would be right away. It has to be right away. That's the whole point. But if you're healthy, how once a year you recommend this or once every no, 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 that device should, uh, you should put it in your toilet and forget about it. <laughs> and that will not only give you, and that's the point of having more applications, right, besides colorectal cancer, we help you not only with scary disorders, we also help you to see, does eating Mexican food affect your mood? Or <laughs> does, I don't know, 
travel affect your microbiome to the point that you become grumpy, right? All those things we don't have a connection, but we know there is. Yes. Uh, there, uh, the device itself is outside of the toilet, so you would just dust it as anything else, but the fiber that goes inside of the toilet is disposable. So yeah, you would have to clean it or send it to us for a replacement. Um, yeah, okay. um, so, I was going to ask a question, but it's on my mind right now. Oh, okay, of course. Uh, we go through various stages of health. Some days are, are good, better than others. So how does that affect the results? And also, now I remember the question. Um, how, how difficult is insulation? How portable is it? It is highly portable because you would leave the uh, fiber in the toilet. You would just take the outside part. The main component, all of the sensor storage uh, encryption is in the device that is outside of the toilet. So it's highly portable. Uh, another question was highly portable and? Uh, how difficult is it to install? Oh, it's pretty easy. So you would uh, attach it. You can really attach it anywhere outside of the toilet in the proximity. And you can deattach it in the same way. So it's just like a stick on, stick off kind of a method. And your first question was, sorry, my memory is suffering. I need that device. <laughs> does, any, does anyone remember the first question? <laughs> oh, I heard that time is up. Thank you very much for being so friendly. And